These two girls, they're in sub-Saharan Africa. They probably walk every day for two hours, try to get some fresh drinking water. And this is not a picture we downloaded from the website. This is actually a picture that's taken by my wife. And uh, if we think safe drinking water is a basic human right, and obviously these two girls lost some of the right. So uh, my name is Ben Shao. I'm a chemistry professor at the Stony Brook University. So it has become my quest to search for solutions to help the people live in the bottom of the pyramid. The family can only earn maybe less than a dollar per day to still have safe drinking water. So my journey started with an invitation by Richard Leakey. Richard is an amazing guy because you probably heard about the Leakey family. His father, Louis Leakey, discovered Lucy fossils. He also discovered Turkana boy, and each specimen is older than 1.5 million years old. He's also a conservationist. He spent all his time these days to raise the awareness of poaching, and especially try to protect elephants. So with this trip, I get to visit a very unique part of Africa, which is in Kenya. You can see there's a little lake there. That's uh, Tekena Lake, which is one of the largest salt or brackish water lake in Africa. There's tremendous water there, but they're not drinkable. They're hazardous. And uh, this whole region is quite amazing because the history of mankind is written in the rocks of Africa. All those pictures are simply just the cover title uh, images from nature and science as well. So this place is really the epicenter of the study of human origins. But I wasn't go there to try to understand the human origins because I know very little about it. And the reason I was in, invited there is because I was helping him to develop some water purification systems. As you can see, this is a, it's called Turkana Basin Institute, and Richard is the founder of this institute. There are lots of water there. As you can see, there's a river there. river is muddy. It's not drinkable. So, uh, and this place is completely all of grit. It doesn't have electricity. It doesn't have fresh drinking water. It doesn't have connectivity to internet. So, uh, but somehow we generate enough fresh drinking water that will provide the local people that usually walk from one hour to two hours per day to get a bucket of drinking water. And uh, so why did Richard invite me to TBI? It's because I work quite a bit on nanotechnology and nanofibers. And I study tremendous of application of these nanomaterials for biomedical and water applications. I have enough patents and credentials in this area. So uh, we went there. We used the state-of-the-art technologies to install a reverse osmosis system. So I'm sure that some of you are familiar with this system. When the water quality is not good, you use the reverse osmosis system to purify it. But since the place has no electricity, so we have to use solar panels, and we have to store the energy into this institute in order to drive this system. But clearly, this technology is not suitable for the local people because we invested close to 
$100,000 in this system. So uh, this bothers me. Then I realized that the reason this reverse osmosis system is so expensive is because th this technology has not been changed for almost more than 40 years now. Clearly, you don't have to read through all this. You see this is the membrane, which is the most critical component of this reverse osmosis system. It start with this non-woven, very loose fiber structure. It's covered by this sponge-like material. We all have experience with sponge. Sponge, it drips very slowly. Not, the pore size is very small, but the porosity is also very small. It takes tremendous pressure to push the water through. And pressure is, of course, is money. It's, you need the equipment. You also need the electricity to run it. Of course, this pore size is still too big. So usually you coat something like a plastic. It's very dense. It's really hard to push it through. So serendipitously, the next year, I happened to thought about this problem. So I come up with this invention. So uh, this is a non-woven, very loose, pore structure. If I have a way to divide this diameter by a factor, factor of 3, factor of 10, keep the same mater materials, then all of a sudden, this one becomes very small hole size, but still have lots of porosity. So it flows very fast. It needs very little pressure to push it through. Low pressure is good. That means I can have a smaller pump. I can have a smaller footprint. I don't need that much energy to do this. Does this concept work? It does work. So I constructed, this is just a cartoon to show you, that I have different size of this fibers, different diameters, and I just, I did a layer by layer by layer with a very high porosity. Eventually, I have very, very small fibers on top of it. So with this concept, we spin off a company called, it's called Liquidity. So those are two interesting products. The first one is actually, it's a gravity-driven base it's, this looks like a coffee filter, which it is a coffee filter. But we can remove bacteria and viruses, even some toxic metal ions simultaneously by using gravity. And gravity is free. Gravity is truly <laughs> the cheapest pressure. And this one is actually a little bottle, which we, I, when I travel, I always use it because I can go to any dirty water source. I can pick out some water. It needs a very little force to squeeze the clean water out. This system can last probably between a month or three months, depends on how dirty is your water. And because of this technology, so liquidity actually has won this 2015 TechCrunch uh, a competition in New York. But still, if you look at, I need plastic, I need materials to build this. Still expensive. If I really want to solve the problem for people living this type of environment, living at the, the, the bottom of the pyramid of the man, it's too expensive. So that's the bad news. So finally, we have another breakthrough. That is, there are a quite a bit of biomass in the area. And the biomass that goats will usually eat. And there are free resources. I, one thing we can do is, going back to history, think about how mankind tried to make papers. So we 
use the nanotechnology that can take any biomass or bio waste of no value or very low value, we can degrade it down to different size of fibers. We don't dissolve them, we simply digest it. We can use the same principle to build layer by layer system just like making papers. And we hope we can help these people. The people live at the bottom of the pyramid and we believe that water is a basic human right and new inventions are the only solution to help those people. Thank you. <laughs>